All right, everybody, we're about to check out this incarceration lineup. Uh, we're already got tickets to it since somebody decided to start a layaway plan before the lineup even dropped. But uh, we've had a good time both times we went, so even if it's not the greatest lineup in the world, I'm sure it'll still be a good time. Any strong predictions or hopes? I'm just hoping that... It is going to be a hell of a lineup. We'll start at Friday and work through the days of the weekend and all that. I'm predicting, and I said this when I saw Sonic Temple's lineup, I think Incarceration is going to be the heavier alternative compared to Sonic. So I think this is going to be a lot of more heavier bands. All right, we're about to scroll down and it should be there. <laughs> try to stop it on Friday. Friday, they kind of gave away Limp Biscuit, and I was surprised not a lot of people were shitting on Limp Biscuit being there. I'm perfectly fine with that because I haven't seen them, and my inner seven, eight-year-old self will be having a good time. Will be, nah. They can get kind of boring after about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, Highly suspect, excited about that. Uh, they just need to, I've seen the set list they've been playing, like at Louder in Life, they played a couple of their hits, but they completely shunned most of their big singles. So I think they could do a better job with their set list. I didn't even think Cold Chamber was a band anymore, so that's surprising. Hate Breed, I'm familiar with. Don't know. P.O.D. I'm very happy to see yeah. on this list. Yeah, that Good I've fact. they've always played at a bunch of festivals I've been to, but I've always missed them, so I'm definitely going to make sure to catch them this time. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Slaughter to Prevail, not super familiar with. We Came as Romans, it's not bad. I'm cool with that. And Chelsea Grin still a thing? Other than that, don't really know. See, now, our buddy Harris, he got tickets to this, too, and he sent me a text that I didn't open because I know it was going to have the lineup attached to it. He said, it's beautiful. That's all he said to me. So I know he's very happy, and based off what I've seen already, I could see why. This is, definitely seems right up his alley. Mm -hmm. So are you, what do you think of Friday? Honestly, I'm happy to see Limp Biscuit as the headliner. It's this will be one of my checkoff list of bands yeah. to see that I have not seen. Yeah. So I'll be happy. So Friday, not bad at all. A P.O.D. Limp Biscuit and Highly Suspect are probably my top ones to check out. Mm-hmm. And Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay, so let me let me just get this. They already announced Pantera in advance, and if you haven't seen Pantera, because there's a lot of people in our like age group, they never got the chance to see Pantera. If you're excited, cool. I've been hearing good things about their shows, but even though I'm not a big fan, I know I do know the history of Pantera, and I see this as a cheap way to get a cash grab for the lead singer because. We all know why the band broke up, and he didn't seem like the best person to be in a band with. He kind of seemed like a scummy person, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And even Vinny Paul, he said he never wants to see a Pantera reunion ever happen since Dimebag died. And now after a few years after Vinny passes away, now all of a sudden he feels all about doing a Pantera reunion. It just seems like a kind of cheap way to get a big payday out of it which i mean that's just me i'll still probably check them out they're a big band but i will say they were never a headlining they were never the band of headline festivals when they stopped and i still don't think they should be now mm -hmm. i agree so i know that's going to be very polarizing opinion but you know that's just what i think let's see lamb of god uh I, they were there. They weren't bad at the last incarceration, but if you're not a diehard fan of them, their set kind of drags for 
a little while. After a couple songs, you just kind of, you're ready for them to be done if you're not a big fan. Yep. In this moment, even though I'm not the biggest in this moment fan, I I do like seeing them that high up there. I think that's good for them, especially if you know the kind of shows they put on that I'm happy for them to be that high up there. Mm Mm-hmm. Motionless and why can't go wrong there. I would actually put them above in this moment and even Lamb of God if it were up to me, but I'm fine in this moment because of the show they put on. I can't argue with that, I guess. Under Oath. I like some Under Oath. I'm cool with that. Have you heard of The Ghost Inside? I'm maybe. I know their story, like they all got in a. Um, really bad tour bus accident several years back and they lost and like the drummer lost a leg i believe and they were all severely injured and they all came back and started touring again so i might have to listen to them i know a lot of people are fans of them and i I do like the comeback story they had even though i it's it intrigues me Mm -hmm. suicide silence did you ever listen to them back in high school at all I, I never Honestly, been. I don't even remember. I might have and not even noticed it was them. I know they were big back then, but I never went on them. I heard You Only Live Once. I remember the music video being cool, and I know the lead singer passed away. But uh, they're a big Memphis Mayfire. That's uh, pretty solid. At Mushroom Head. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I guess uh, why not? Uh, Fire from the Gods, Harris will be happy about that. Woe is me. I vaguely remember Woe is me from high school. I know the obvious standouts for you in this moment, Motionless. Uh, you see, here's here's my thing. Like, Sonic Temple, I do think so far I dig their lineup more, but I do appreciate seeing a lot of bands on here that I have not seen at, at a lot of festivals. Now, the headliners, uh, if I saw right, I believe Slipknot is the headliner on Sunday, which I'm sick to fucking death of Danny Wimmer booking them as a headliner. So, so here's what I'll say about Slipknot. I'm a Slipknot fan, always have been. And if you've never seen Slipknot, go watch their show. I recommend checking them out. But I've seen them... From 2015 to 2021, about four or five times. And you know what the only difference between all those shows were? Corey Taylor's mask. The entire fucking show is always the exact same thing that they do. They barely change up their set list. They do the same show over and over again. And you know, I'm not saying they don't deserve to be headliners, but Danny Wimmer, he's probably booked... I don't know, 100, 150 festivals in his life, and Slipknot's probably headlined 70 or 80 of them. Yep. This, uh, they, they're over, they overdo the Slipknot shit, if you ask me. And that's my problem with these festivals in general. Like I said, I'm excited for Limp Biscuit, and yes, Pantera is a different headliner, but you know what they all have in common? They all peaked 20, 30 plus years ago. They're afraid to give somebody else a chance. That's my little quick rant on the headlining thing that these the headlining problem these festivals have. So, and I know you you're perfectly fine with seeing Slipknot again. You don't have a problem with it. No, I don't have a problem with it. But I do have one issue. Continue to read the the second line. Nope. Uh, I used to be a Megadeth fan. No problem with them. I seen them live. I wasn't impressed. But I remember there being sound issues, so maybe that was out of their control. But, yeah. Yeah. Bush? uh, See, everybody's going to call me such a fucking lame for saying I like Bush and then I think Megadeth sucks. (laughs) It's the the 90s kid coming out. Me, yes, I'm a Bush fan. I've always had a good time anytime I've seen Bush. I think you'll enjoy him, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Flyleaf with Lacey Sturmbeck. I'm all about that. Uh, asking Alexandria uh, if I pretend that they have a different band name, I might be all right with it. All, all I know is they better play their old shit. They won't. 
they better play their old songs because if not, I'm, oh, I'm actually, walking away. Let me go ahead and I'll pull up, see what they've been playing lately, if I can type. Uh, see, that's been our problem with asking Alexandria. It's like they forget where they came from type of thing. Like stand up and scream back in high school like that was everybody's shit. And it seems like they've completely abandoned everything about that. Okay, final episode is on there. Let's scroll down. See, only one song off their best album and the album that put them on the map. Like, I understand. I don't have a problem with them becoming successful and getting a bunch of radio hits. Good for them. I don't see anything wrong with that. Just, I don't know. It's not the Asking Alexandria that anybody in our demographic and age group grew up loving and... I mean, like I said, happy for them to become successful, but I don't like when bands just completely shut out, you know, what brought them to the dance in the first place. Mm -hmm. Especially when you know people want to hear their old songs, especially when you're going to a festival mm -hmm. like Inc. Uh, Wage War, they were there in 2021, and I was actually surprised by them. I liked them. Mm -hmm. Same. Guar, who the, who the fuck still wants to see Guar? Like, Isn't that the, uh, refresh my memory again? Uh, okay. Never mind. I might give him a shot. I don't know. I mean, if we're not doing anything, I might go watch the show, but... <laughs> I still... See, no. I... See, they sound like shit. I mean, I get, like, their gimmick is interesting, but I think they're an awful band. Uh, Crown the Empire, they're pretty good. I've heard some stuff by them. Ten years. Finally. Ten years. We did miss them last time because of the rain, and we yeah. got there late. Uh, I like ten years. Fame on uh, fire. Dayseeker. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy for Dayseeker. Mm -hmm. They've been... Ever since Bad Omens took them on tour with them and their new album, Dark Sun, came out, they've been getting a lot of attention that I think they deserve. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed them. I really did. Even um, Ava Under Fire. I've been wanting to see them. I'm not... I'm not disappointed. See, here's the thing. I'm not jumping up and down over this lineup. But at the same time, it would be hypocritical for me to say, like, oh, this lineup sucks because... I said, look, all these headliners you booked a thousand times, but I'm tired of seeing them. I mean, Limp Biscuit I haven't seen, but you get the point. And then, but then the lower bill, they've got a bunch of people that I've never seen before. So it'd be hypocritical for me to shit on the undercard and then, you know, crap on, you know, the headliners. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to have to have Harris fill me in. I know some of these bands he did tell me about, like Wage War, Crown the Empire. Uh, he seems like a guy that would like Mushroom Head. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's solid. I'm, it'll be fun for sure. Uh, I think it's a good lineup. It's just not... doesn't have the same star power, I guess you could say, that Sonic Temple has or last year's Ink lineup had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Friday, definitely going to be sticking it out all day. Uh Saturday, I'll give Pantera a chance, even though, personally, I don't like the idea. But even with that, I'm sure I'll never, we'll never get a chance to see any kind of Pantera ever again. So I'll probably give them a chance, but can't say I'll stay the whole entire night. And then Slipknot, uh, I'm sure I'm going to be forced to fucking stay there the whole time. I shouldn't bitch too much. Like, I know I'll have fun if I'm in the crowd for Slipknot. Just, I'm, like I said, I want, this is what I appreciate about stuff like Warp Tour and all that. They give, you know, lower tier bands a chance to go out and headline and show what they can do. Like, I know what I'm going to get with, like, Slipknot and Limp Biscuit and stuff like that. I'd like to give other bands a chance to go out there. Like, for example, if you've seen Ice Nine Kills or Bad Omens in the last couple of years, even nothing more, you're going to tell me those bands couldn't headline a festival. Maybe not to this large a scale, but there's a, other bands out there that are, you know, hungry and 
it's got to be hard to get motivated when you're constantly only you're not going to make it past a certain level and be that band that closes out big shows like this mm -hmm. so that's my biggest criticism with these rock festivals i the headliners are always rinse repeat are you familiar with we came as romans at all they sound familiar to be honest i can't i can't recall So yeah, it's pretty much up our alley with what we listen to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chelsea Grin. I don't. I remember Chelsea Grin. I remember hearing that name all the time, but I don't think I ever actually listened to him. They're giving old. Asking Alexandria about it. Yeah. yeah, that's a fair way to put it. You see, now they bring me back to Asking Alexandria, like, uh, look at their set list, and it kills me that not the American average is never on their set list anymore. Luckily, I seen them in 2013 before they turned super mainstream. This will be my first time seeing them. Oh, yeah. And I might be disappointed as fuck. Just saying. Yeah, and his last message that he sent me, he said there's 29 bands on here that he wants to see. Twelve. Yeah, so he's going to have us busy that weekend. Harris, Shh. don't be surprised if you have to carry me, because yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have to carry me. Yeah, I mean, I'll finally be able to text him back. He probably thinks I was ignoring him, but I was just trying to avoid seeing the lineup. Uh I'm yeah. just happy I, I mean, I'm happy. Listen white again. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy for him. I mean, because he bought a ticket too, and this is his kind of lineup, so that's good for him. Yeah. And I'll try to keep up with him if he really plans on going to see 29 of them. I think the most bands I've ever watched at a festival was like 22, and I was a lot younger back then. Well. Looks like uh, on this weekend, you're not going to have a choice but to break out the uh, younger you because you don't have a choice. Yeah. I, I do want to work on my cardio. I need to get a treadmill or something. Because <laughs> I'll be at a festival and I'll start fucking dying and breathing super heavy after a couple of hours. I'm just glad Dayseeker is on this list. Yeah, it's, that's Especially for, for Sunday. I'm happy. Like, don't get me wrong, would it have been nice if Bad Omens was on this list too, even though they're playing at Sonic Temple? Yeah, yeah see, they, they made that clear. They said the only crossover bands would be, like, people on the lower end. Which, I mean, Bad Omens, they are about to play Blue Ridge for the third year in a row. So, they're. I think if they were available, they probably would have hopped on this one, too. Oh, yeah. Because they definitely. seem to be, they're riding their wave right now, trying to do as much as they can. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was getting, uh... No, I'm not even going to say that. I was going to say I'm getting, like... Actual heavy, uh, insane clown posse vibes. Which I don't. <gasps> I was gonna say. I'm. I'm not trying to insult this guy. That's just what. Uh, yeah. I was thinking of. I was gonna say. ICB make sure of Slipknot and um, the one band that we just went up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, with this part, I was definitely pretty accurate. They're interesting. I might look into them. I, I like the guitar playing I was hearing. I'm a little surprised you haven't heard this. I'm trying to remember. Was, is this that song that the Blitz played that one day that I liked? Yep, I do know this song. Looks like I've listened to him. 
died at the end of Okay, yeah, I remember there was a song that they played by Under Earth on the Blitz, and I completely forgot the name of it, but yeah, that was it. Have you heard any of Limp Biscuit's new stuff? No, I haven't. I'm just so used to listening well, to his old stuff. Well, before before we close this out. <laughs> yeah, he's he found a way to get people talking about him again with this whole embracing the whole dad thing with his age. So. I mean, I, um, I know even some of my buddies would give me shit for saying I'm excited to see Limp Biscuit, but oh, I'm not one of those bandwagon people. I'm I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, I liked Limp Biscuit. I, I even liked Creed, you know. I'm not a Nickelback hater. I'll be the first to tell you Nickelback, they're pretty damn good live, too. So, yeah, you know. See, so, yeah, I just wanted to see if you've heard that any of their new stuff before we close this video out. Uh, they still sound exactly the same. I'm excited to see Limp Bizkit yeah. for the first time. Yeah, that's the standout headliner for me, so I guess it's good that they're on the first day. Yeah, guys. Uh, if more than you know, the 25 people that clicked on this video, uh, leave some comments, maybe some band suggestions, who you're most excited to see. Uh, and all that good stuff and we'll check you guys later if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like and if you're not already go ahead and subscribe so you'll be notified of any future content